What's creamy? So this is kind of a sequel to an earlier video I made called something like 15 lines of bash that finally allowed me to focus. And all that did pretty much as a quick recap was allowed me to switch between several different time tracking modes. Not so much to graph the amount of time I spend, but just kind of deliberately to, yeah, I, I don't know, to tell by the end of the month, like how much time I've actually spent working and how much time I've spent wasting. I don't like necessarily have to stick to um, actually like not like I don't have to work constantly as long as I log that I've wasted time, you know, and then I'll look back on it and think, damn, I'm such a failure. So I've got these four modes. I kind of simplified it, but I wanted to block websites so that when I go to YouTube or whatever, it just like will not work while I'm in a certain focus mode. So I've got the work focus mode. You can see if I try to go to YouTube, it'll just not connect to the internet and same thing for Reddit and whatever. And the way this is done is actually quite simple. So inside my, let me go to my dot files. I have a script called time.sh that kind of does this. So I've got those categories. I talk about this in the last video, so I won't go over it a uh, bunch, but there's a little program called Hostess, which I think on, let's see, Hostess GitHub. Uh, yeah, there it is. Basically, this is a little Go program that allows you to manipulate your host file in slash et cetera slash hosts. And if we go there, if we vim slash et cetera slash hosts, you can see it's basically just a simple file where you've got an IP address. So this is just the, the local one. And then um, a, a, an address to route to. So for me, localhost and then a bunch of different URLs. So this will route all traffic from all of these URLs to uh, just like my local host, which obviously means that I can't access it. If YouTube is just being, their traffic is all being uh, sent to me, I obviously can't serve the videos. That's probably kind of, there's some wrong stuff in there because I don't really know networking that well and how DNS works, but basically all you have to do is add stuff to this. And then Hostess, what it does is just like, it adds a little thing that lets you add and kind of remove, let's see, hostess ls, like what what ports are being mapped to what. And you can see if I go to like the waste mode and then I do like hostess ls again, you can see it kind of removes a lot of them. So then we go to uh, YouTube, let's try it. And it looks like YouTube loaded up fine. I have like uBlock just getting rid of the homepage because I'm that serious about focusing, no big deal. But, yeah, it's definitely a little better. There's a couple quirks though. So one thing is if I go back to work and I go to YouTube again, it might not immediately update because of browser cache. See, it was able to load YouTube, but if I force refresh, then it's unable to connect. And then we get the same thing. So that's a slightly annoying thing. Another thing about this is in about preferences, I think under DNS maybe, Okay, that didn't work. But if you go to DNS, you have to turn off your DNS over HTTPS because otherwise like your et cetera host file will just be overridden by Firefox's files or whatever. I'm, I'm not exactly sure why. Someone in the comments, if you could explain that, that would be cool. But that's how I got it kind of working. Not perfect, but pretty good. Now, this hostess thing, this Go application, the reason I'm using this and not uh, pure bash, which I know how to do this in broad strokes. All it would take is kind of having a bash script that uses a couple of utilities and some uh, like grep to kind of find and pull out and modify this file because the file structure is super simple. It's literally just this and then like delete it and paste it back. So easy, but I, I, I don't know. I don't really know how to do that. I could probably figure it out in like 15 minutes, but I'd rather just sweep all this um, under the rug to another application. To be honest, I do feel a little bit guilty about that because it, it really would not take all that long to figure out how to do that. It's just probably some simple bash and it'd make me better at bash, which is something I want. Uh, but yeah, I'll maybe I'll work on that down the road. I think it's, it, it's definitely such an easy thing and a good exercise in bash to just completely roll your own instead of bringing in this Hostess program, but Hostess is quite good. And it's it's nice to have this extra Hostess LS for debugging, but you could write all of that. So back to this, uh, yeah, it basically just removes it all, adds it all, pretty simple. Another cool thing that you could do, I think, is do this for like Discord as well. And if you had a local client, it would work too. So like discord.com, I don't need a, I don't, I don't know if I need this www, but uh, can't hurt. 
So let's rerun this. So let's switch to waste and then let's switch back to work. And now if I open up my Discord client, well, let's, let's just quit it first just to get a new, okay, force quit. You gonna quit? Oh, I don't know why it's got that indication thing. This Discord client, I think they want you to pronounce it Dorian, but anyone cool pronounces it Dorjan. And it looks like that did not work at all. And that's funny because, oh, they probably have their own whole caching scheme, but I bet if we went to discord.com, nope, that's working fine. Wonder why that is. Did I misspell discord? Oh, obviously. So if I go waste and I go work, and then I open up, oops, detached from tmux. Uh, let's see, where was that? Dorjan. Yeah, I couldn't figure out Discord, honestly, and I don't want to waste anyone's time too much, but it would be cool if someone knew why that's the case. Maybe they have some kind of different caching scheme, or maybe I made a really dumb typo, or I just don't understand how HTTP works, or something like that. But there you go, that's the system. A little rough around the edges, but I was able to throw it together quite quickly, so I am proud of that. But yeah, that's about it. Low quality, little bash script that might save you. Uh, there's also like tons of other focus mode apps like Raycast focus mode. I don't know, it's all right, but I find it kind of too easy to stop. And I mean, this is easy to stop too. Like if you go to just your etc. host file, right? And then you open this up, like you could easily just delete this line and then boom, good, you're, you're doing stuff. But someone in one of the GitHub issues I posted about this said like, yeah, I used to do that he actually gave me the idea to, to kind of do this, but if your precedent is to edit the config file all the time with Vim or whatever, then it's becomes, it, it becomes like really easy and frictionless for you to just go and delete stuff. Whereas if you're doing it with some kind of CLI thing and you kind of forget over a couple of months, like where, I mean, remembering et cetera hosts is really easy, but I don't know if you just try to avoid that at all costs and stick to your routine, then I think it would work better. I don't know. Maybe you'll get something out of this. Maybe not catch you next time.